Sound Design. Live. All right, we are taking a behind the scenes look at Priority Workshop Seeing Sound. In the last video, we looked at Module 1. In this video, we're going to look at Module 2. So Module 2 is all about speaker placement. What can we know from just our designs and looking at the room and what we know about physics and geometry to help us produce a more consistent result with minimum variance? The first lesson in Module 2 is all about collecting information. Information about your room, your inventory, your system. What you're going to end up with at the end of this lesson is your own personal list of most important questions that you need to ask about every show. And we all have these, right? We have like a short list. We definitely need to know things like what are the speakers? How big is the room? What time is the show? That kind of stuff. And then we have a longer list that um, sometimes we get answers to and sometimes we don't. So you'll see here that I have kind of a master list that I've been compiling over the years uh, with other people's suggestions. At the bottom of most of the lessons, there's a homework walkthrough. So if you're having any trouble, hopefully you can watch that um, and it'll give you the answer. And there's always our online community or reaching out to me privately if you have any trouble. Visualizing speaker coverage is the next lesson in module two. Each of these lessons is going to introduce some new key terms and concepts to help us start talking about the shape that a speaker makes in a room and how then we can match that shape to the room. So in this lesson, we're going to learn about on axis, off axis left, off axis right, vertical top, vertical bottom, stuff like that. Lesson 2.2 is all about front to back distance ratio. I learn more and more about how valuable this is all the time. I think it's the most valuable thing I use now on every show that I work on. And I say that because it's not always immediately apparent when we just have a two dimensional design that we're looking at on a piece of paper, right? We need to know um, a few more things about like how high is the speaker. And once we know how high the speaker is, then we can calculate the distance to the first row to the last row. Knowing the front to back distance ratio gives us all kind of information about like how many speakers do we need in the array? Uh, how many array boxes per zone? What is the splay between them? Um, and if we're not doing a multi element array, maybe we just know what is our um, level variance going to be from front to back if we just have a single speaker. Is this design even going to work? Is it going to meet our so this is where we're going to start coming up with some design guidelines, design criteria as it relates to front to back distance ratio. Um, I explained some stuff about fractions, fun math things. This is a simple lesson that I stole from Steve Bush. Such a simple idea. When you think about it, yes, put sound where the people are, but we still see so many systems that don't follow this guide guideline, right? Anytime you see a symmetrical sound system in an asymmetrical room or trying to cover an asymmetrical audience plane, it's not following this guideline, right? By the way, this is when we start getting into the lessons where you're actually doing designs in MapXT or whatever design system you want to use. I should have mentioned that in the first module, actually, that although um, I suggest that you use MapXT, you don't have to use MapXT. And although I use Smart and Sat Live, you can use whatever audio analyzer you want. So you can also use whatever design and prediction software you want. In fact, if you want to use pencil and paper, you can do most of these lessons where you're just doing designs with pencil and paper. It doesn't really matter to me. Um, I just suggest MapXT to people who are new and are looking for something free and easy to get started with. But this is when we get into the lessons where you'll start exporting those designs and uploading them into the course to complete your homework assignments. All right, lesson 2.4, place at coverage center. Such a, again, such a simple concept, but when we actually start to look at its application, we see, oh, I haven't been doing that in my designs or, oh, that place that I work at doesn't quite follow that. So what are the repercussions and uh, what can we do to improve those situations where the speakers are not placed at coverage center? <laughs> All right. Lesson 2.5. Again, I know I keep saying that this is simple, but I just discovered that we can take these simple ideas that are easy to remember, and totally easy to learn, but the really the devil's in the details, right? The, the application, the applying them to our designs. This is just all about matching 
wide coverage speakers to wide spaces or wide audience planes and narrow coverage to narrow audience planes. Um, it may even sound a little bit silly, but I think it'll make more sense once you actually see the lesson. All right, lesson 2.6. Now we start getting into a little bit more exciting math and, and I think some of the more powerful stuff that you're going to take away thinking, yes, this is really gonna help me in my designs. And this first one is forward aspect ratio. And it's simply the power of being able to match speaker shames by width and depth to room or audience plane shapes by width and depth. Simple as that. Um, there's a cool little calculator down here that I developed to help you look at that. So you can put in a length and width of a space. It'll tell you what the forward aspect ratio is. And then you can tell it, hey, this is the speaker that I have. Is that good enough? And it'll say smiley face, yes. Or if it, um, you know, if it was the wrong speaker, it might say, no, you're actually over covered by 4.9 decibels. Try doing this instead. So just um, a, not really a calculator that necessarily gives you answers, but it helps you investigate um, these shapes. Okay, we looked at forward aspect ratio. So now in lesson 2.7, we're gonna look at lateral aspect ratio. While forward aspect ratio helped us look at speaker shape by width and depth of their shape, we're using lateral aspect ratio to look at the width of coverage from a specific distance from the speaker. This answers the question, do we need front fills, for example? All right, here we're gonna get into some basic subwoofer arrays in lesson 2.8, and you're gonna learn how to make two subwoofer arrays that you just need two speakers for, the two element inline gradient array, and the in-fire array. Each of them have slightly different applications, give you slightly different results, and we talk about how to build them and their application. I should also say that with each of these videos, since we're not watching the videos, with each of the videos, there's an initial section that is usually just me and slides, and I'm explaining the concept. And then in the second section, there is in the field work. So for example, in this video, in the first section, I'm going to explain the concept of these two subwoofer arrays and how they're built. And then we'll, in the second half of the video, is actually a video of me in the field, building them, uh, measuring them, verifying them, things like that. So that is the format for the videos. And then here's a bonus video at the bottom that's half an hour long, but gives you an entire tuning from beginning to end from first person perspective with this silly GoPro camera that I have. <laughs> but it just allows you to see how all of this stuff comes together in the field. And you're only at the end of module two at this point, so you don't know the whole process yet, but I just want you to see how all these pieces start to come together in the field. Okay, so that's the end of module two of Proteo Workshop Seeing Sound. In the next video, let's look at module three. Sound design. Yeah.